I am Community Clo of Radio One Richmond. I am so excited about the RVA Community Makers 2021, a mixed media public art project highlighting and supporting local visual and musical artists. RVA Community Makers, this is what it is. It's mixed media, musical artists, now on view at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts in the main atrium. It includes the following visual artists and the honorees jazz style genre, Jake Plunky Branch, instrumentalist and visual artist, Mahari Chabuera, blues, jazz, Desiree Roots, vocalist, actor, Justice Elder, R&B, John Bibb, singer, songwriter, David Marion, hip hop, Zebe, Zenoria, writer, artist, Ned Harvin, and gospel, Cora Armstrong, singer, songwriter, Austin Miles. Come on in, Dr. Monroe Harris. He's chairman of the board with the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. How you doing? I'm doing great, Clovey. Good to see you. I'm gonna talk a little bit about you. Dr. Harris was elected president of the Board of Trustees for the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts on July 1, 2018. He is the first African-American to hold this position in the 82 year history of the institution. How are you, Dr. Harris? I'm even better now hearing you. <laughs> well, you ready to do your welcome? I'm ready. Let's go. Thank you so much for the kind words, Clovia. I am extremely happy to welcome you on behalf of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. Happy Black History Month. This is one of my favorite programs because it allows us to interact and support the community. As a part of our Black History Month celebration, we are happy to highlight some of our visual artists and musical leaders in such a unique way. Please plan to visit us this month to see the beautiful mural that these artists have created to tribute these fine musical leaders who we recognize for all the great work that they do. A special thank you to J.P. Morgan Chase for sponsoring this event. Clovia, back to you. Well, Dr. Harris, thank you so much for all of your wonderful words as usual. Deccan T, Men's Cole is Vice President for the Mid-Atlantic J.P. Morgan Chase Global Philanthropy. How are you? Oh, I'm lovely this afternoon. Thank you for having me. I want to talk a little bit about you, of course. She <laughs> served as Vice President for the Mid-Atlantic J.P. Morgan Chase Global philanthropy, overseeing strategic grant making in the greater Washington region. She's an economic and community development practitioner, having worked on the ground in the country's most distressed communities. Prior to joining J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, she served as the director of policy at the Center for Community Progress, a national nonprofit based in Flint, Michigan, that equips communities with the tools and resources needed to effectively address abandonment, blight, and vacancy. Deccan T, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for that intro. I'm, you know, Chase is so pleased to partner with the VMFA across a few of the programs, including Friday After Five, African American Read-In, and tonight's RVA Community Makers. Um, we are particularly committed to the Central Virginia region, um, and it's events like this that are really important to Chase as um, investing in our community is the backbone of how we show up as a company and one that I'm truly proud to work for. Um, through support of our programs or support of these programs, we're able to further advance the MFA's mission to maintain and enhance the richness of cultural life, uh, which is really vital to the fabric of Richmond and its surrounding community. Um, again, I wanna just thank you for allowing me to join you this evening and a huge thank you to the artist and to Hamilton Glass for his concept creation. Um, I believe it was his ideal alongside Paula Saylor Robinson, right? And many VMFA colleagues who made this installation a reality. Uh, VMFA, thank you again for giving Chase the opportunity to be a part of such a special celebration. And I truly can't wait to be there in person one day soon. 
Well, we thank you so much for the partnership with Conti Men's Cole. I know you're busy and you have to go. And Dr. Monroe Harris, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. you. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Good to see you all. All right, we're going to keep it going. Hamilton Glass and Paula Sailor Robinson, come on in. How y'all doing? Hey, oh, how are you? Good yourself. Great. Hamilton Glass's career as an artist stems from his architecture and design background. His passion for public art pushed him to start a career as an artist and muralist. Public art has the power to influence and inspire the surrounding community. Hamilton creates a message with his art that connects his art to the community. Hamilton, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Okay. Paula is Director of Audience Development and Community Engagement at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, a knowledgeable marketing and branding professional with over 25 years of experience in a variety of industries and academic institutions. She has successfully developed and expanded audiences for many established brands. At the VMFA, she has created several new initiatives to build community, including VMFA After Hours, Summer Breeze Fridays, and RV community makers with artist Hamilton Glass. What it do, Paula? Yes, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. All right, so I got some questioning for you. Hamilton, can you give our viewers a little background about RVA Community Makers? Yes, absolutely. So RVA Community Makers was kind of a concept I thought about to, for one, get more people to kind of celebrate us during Black History Month. Um, for two, to, to do it in a creative way. And so what better place to do that than the VMFA? And so um, I first approached Paula about this project in 2019 and just thinking about how we could get the community in the VMFA um, and, and really start calling out uh, these grassroots leaders that make Richmond so rich. Um, and so I, I explained that to Paula. She loved the idea and we've been working on it ever since. That's good stuff. Is this program aligned with what you try to accomplish with your artwork? Absolutely. So every year uh, we try to pick out people who are doing great things in the community um, that are kind of aligned with what the VMFA has going on at that point in time. As you can imagine, imagine in Richmond, there are so many people doing great things. It's always a really hard task to do. Um, but it really, I believe it really gives people time to really learn about different networks and, uh, just different places and things people are doing. Um, so it's, it's not just highlighting them, but it's highlighting what they're doing and hopefully people will get to see those things and want to join along. That's good stuff. Paula, what is the VMFA's goal with RVA Community Makers? Yes, and what, one of the things that we want to do, obviously, is have people see themselves and their stories within the walls of the museum, right? In our artwork, in our pictures, in our exhibitions. And this is definitely a way to help do that. So this is a way that people come and see them, literally see themselves, but also see people they know, feel stories, you know, and we love that. So that's part of my role is to help that happen. One of the nice pieces about RVA Community Makers, which ties so well to what Hamilton does, is the public art section of it. So each year we've thought of ways to have regular people from the community contributing to this project. So we've done it again this year in the pandemic virtually, but that's one of the ways it really connects and seems to be so genuinely um, a part of what Hamilton tries to do with his art. So yes, this is our third year as Hamilton mentioned and um, the project now has grown. We've honored 19 people in total and we've highlighted 12 local artists over those three years and Hamilton has been the leader all the way and it's, it's great. It's one of my favorite things. I'm so happy we do it. And of course, there's a lot of other things we do over Black History Month, and I encourage people to go to our website to check it out. But this is definitely one of my favorites. And again, how, again, you just said it, but we want to reiterate it. How do our listeners get more information about this program and other great programs? At the yes. So vmfa.museum is our website. 
We have a Black History Month homepage. Each of the events that are listed on there are, you know, clickable and they can take you to even more information, including our VA community makers. So please do do that. And more importantly, come to the museum. The museum is open. It is safe, socially distanced, wear a mask, all those good things. But the exhibition, the RVA community makers exhibition is up. It is right in the main atrium. And I really encourage you to come out and see it and enjoy it. It's beautiful. All right, Paulus, Sailor Robinson and Hamilton Glass, thank you so much for creating history in our communities. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Claudia. I am Community Clo and I love what I do. Let's get back to the visual arts and let's get back to the musical arts. Joining me is Mahari Chebwera. Come on in, Mahari. Hey, y'all. Hey. <laughs> Mahari is an artist and curator living and working between Newport News and Richmond. Shortly after receiving her BFA in painting and printmaking from VCU in 2017, she began cultivating community rooted in radical Black well being and self determination. She was the 2019 2020 recipient of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts Professional Fellowship and the 2020 recipient of the Visual Arts Center Emerging Artist. Oh boy, congratulations, Mahari. Thank you for joining us. Oh Lord, I can't wait to talk about your visual eye. Funky, come on in. Hello. <laughs> so I've been rocking with you, Plunky, since the days of Dog with Dale over at the Bill Robinson Playground, the Grammy Award winning back in the day with you and your brothers and others when you was Plunky and the one is the juju. Now you're showing how far you go back. That's right. <laughs> You can't live in Richmond and don't rock with Plunky. And I kind of I kind of agree with that. A performer, a songwriter, a music and film producer. Uh, you had on on the syndicated radio show, which was the number one radio show across the country, afternoons with the Michael Bazin show, and he played drop upon drop during the whole four shows. And I also want to mention, and I know I want to mention that you are the Grammy nominated Plunky. Hey, Plunk, what's going on? Hello, Community Clo. We go back a long way and we're still going strong. That's um, right. Um, I, I just love being here with you and I love this particular program just to talk about how um, art and artists can serve the community. So I'm welcoming myself to your show. <laughs> wow. wow, I'm glad to be here. RVA Community Makers 2021. Mahari, look, I want to get with you to talk about what inspires you. What inspires your visual art? Mm, I make things that feel good. Um, yeah, I make things that feel good. Wow. Yeah. Feel good, well being, and determination. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Sounds like you're a reader. You read a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. Growing so what's up, um, right now? In a, what am I reading right now? Uh-huh. Um, actually, I just ordered this book. Uh, it's called Spiritual Partnerships by Gary Zukov. He also mm -hmm. received the soul. Um, wow. Yeah, I talk about my work as being a way for me to, like, line myself up with the energy of my soul, um, which I think is something that we can pinpoint mm -hmm. by how it feels, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's all about feeling to you and that's what you're trying to, to portray with your works. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to get myself to a certain place. And then I hope I hope what I make can do that for someone else, but it's you know it's for me first. So where is that certain place? Is that a secret right now? Um uh, I, I think it changes. You know, okay. so I try not to like stamp it because I know right. it's I know it's changing. And you don't, yeah, it's ever changing, and you're not mm -hmm. you're not sealing on it right now because right. you're gonna blow it off and you're gonna keep on going and going. Exactly. But I appreciate you being here. All right, Plunky, tell us about your commitment to giving back to the RVA community and why you do it so great. Well, I have to say that my becoming a musician came out of my political activism. And by that, I mean 50 years ago or more, when I, I was in college, um, I decided I was not going to be a scientist. And I wanted to find a way to uh, serve my community and 
follow my political leanings, which was very much to the left. Um, I came out of the civil rights movement and the black arts movement of the 60s and 70s. Um, so the concept of using my art to, to foster some sort of political um, advancement for the community is kind of a natural um, affiliation for me. Um, jazz music uh, has lots of different uh, incarnations, lots of different subgenres. But for me, jazz music is always about um, improvisation and service, uh, the idea of the self and the group. And so all of these theories that came out of my um, meeting uh, uh, an African musician whose name was Ndiko Kaba, a, a Zulu from South Africa in 1969, and learning about African music and how closely it related to jazz, and how he taught me that in African society, um, the, the way we judge art is based on how well it serves the society, how well it serves the tribe or, or the village. And so all of those things coming together um, is uh, shapes my activism and my, my, my action here in, in the Richmond community for the last, as I say, 50 years. Your music is definitely therapy. While we're going through the thick of it and the state is shut down, you're doing front porch concerts for us. I started doing front porch, front porch concerts uh, for my neighbors. Um, I was inspired by seeing a, a violinist in Italy perform solo um, and and I thought it was a poignant way to have the music serve uh, yeah. the people in my block. Little did I know that it would um, gain a lot of momentum and eventually we start live streaming and we would get thousands of people from all over tuning in. Um, it seemed like a small thing uh, yeah. to do 20 minutes every day, but after day 60 or 70, <laughs> it got to be, um, uh, I won't say, well, I'll just say, it took a lot. I wasn't just I wasn't just playing. I wasn't just improvising. I was creating a program. For example, I might do uh, songs about streets. Uh, so I'd say on the street where you live, Sesame Street, uh, sunny side of the street. So I was doing these programs, and people um, were affected by it. There's something really poignant about a solo instrument. It could be a tuba or a piccolo, um, but people right. often really say the saxophone. Um, kind of sounds like a human voice. So I think it evokes a kind of spirituality just naturally. And it was just so needed, Plunky, because we were caught smack dab in the middle at that time. We hadn't even um, opened up to phase one at the time when yeah. you guys started doing it. So when we move it into phase two and everybody's like, hey, look, I'm going to see Plunk. And he yeah. was like, you're going to a Plunky house. Yeah. And I was like, we got to socially distance ourselves. Well, we and did. So and everybody was. Yeah, we, we socially distanced. Uh, we would pay homage to the to the uh, essential workers every day. Um, it was really quite moving, even for me. Um, and I and I've I've been doing music for for fifty odd years. I've played in venues all around the world, uh, in Europe, in Africa, in Cuba, Brazil. But really, I'm, I'm saying honestly, I I'm never more inspired than when I perform in Richmond, and it's it's uh, really meaningful for for me to um, teach in schools and teach young people or be a part of political movements. Um, uh, I should say, uh, during the midst of the pandemic and playing, um, the mayor came to one of my concerts and on my birthday gave me the key to the city. So um, yeah. that was quite meaningful. <laughs> that was great. That's why you are the RVA community maker, no doubt. <laughs> and Mahari, I want to get back to you. And I know you're an avid reader. You Great. Oh, I just love your pieces of work. What inspired you to do the visual art that you do? Mm, um, I think we can, I think I, we can go back to that, um, what feels good thing. Um, So my dad was a seeker, um, like he studied a lot of religious traditions and different African traditions. Okay. Um, but he was also super dogmatic and super patriarchal. And so he had a lot to say about my sexuality and my body and the way that I carried myself, what was appropriate and what wasn't. 
-hmm. And so I think in the beginning, when I started making paintings, they were coming from a place of trying to rectify like the harm that he injected. (laughs) Um, So that's what I mean by feel good, right? Like um, my body's a sacred place. My sexuality is a sacred place. Yeah. Um, the history of, of women's participation in different cultures and as different like spiritual leaders is, is sacred and something to be honored. Um, so I did a lot of like tracing back and, and trying to understand these stories or these myths or the ways that they might still be perpetuating themselves in like my, you know, my very like modern experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's where the work comes from. Wow. And, and we just love the work. And I just thank you so much for being here and just looking at your paintings. And then when you're doing your paintings in reference to this genre, I think it matches perfectly with um, Plunky. I yeah, have to it's a nice, I miss the meeting where everybody chose what, um, <laughs> what genre of music they were going to be painting about. Um, so I ended up being placed with Plunky in, in, in jazz. And that's, you know, God is great. It's perfect. I know it's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. And then actually meeting him here. Go ahead, Plunk. She and I hit it off so very, very well. I don't know if you can tell, Clovia, that the two of us come from almost opposite ends of the spectrum and arrive at the same place. Um, yeah. She's very introverted. I'm very extroverted. Her art form is very singular. You can paint by yourself. Mine is very communal just by nature. To be a jazz musician, you're performing with others, you're performing in front of others. Um, Yet when she and I communicated, when we we were looking for a place where we could coalesce, where we could be together, we find that we both have a, a, a pay homage to history. We pay homage to our African heritage. Um, yeah. She queried me on the history of jazz and women in jazz. and. And as you can tell, I love talking, I love teaching. So she just met me where I am. She allowed me to just talk and talk and talk until she found inspiration for the painting. So I appreciate wow. her for that. I think this is great, Mahari. And I thank you so much for you know all that you do as a feeling. And when you said, when as Punky said, y'all sat down and y'all communicated. And then when you communicated, you could feel him. And then you started your feel good piece. And that is so important uh, to do. So Plunky, we talked about your community commitment. I mean, we know your community commitment without even, we just know your your background. We know you, um, you love going to African on Main because you know, that's our link up and meeting meeting place so we can have authentic food for our glorious bodies. So that's important too, for you to be a long time saxophonist to have that win because it's a wind thing. So talk about some of your regimen and you know, you keep your weight down, you know, you gotta go on out. Well, I have two two pieces that that specifically deal with my physical shape. One, I do yoga every day, which I've done for the last 50 years. Um, And two, I play tennis. Those two things dovetail into my my saxophone playing. Um, Playing an instrument and Clover, you're, you're just so ordered. Saxophone is a very physical instrument. It yeah. requires your breath, um, and you do have to be in shape. Your teeth, your lips, your muscles in general. Um, and so for me, like most artists in any genre, but particularly in music, I have to pr- practice on a regular basis um, just to stay physically in shape. I don't know that I've advanced musically that much over the years. I know I have, but 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 primarily it's a physical thing, staying in shape. Musicians say, um, do you have your chops up? Chops referring to your teeth. Do you, are, are, are your, are, is your mouth in shape to keep blowing a horn? Um, is your dentistry in shape? Um, so I do have a regimen. I do do yoga in the morning. I play at least 30 minutes in the afternoon or evening for my horn. And that keeps me evolving and hopefully keeps me in shape. I'm 73 years old and I'm in really good shape and I'm blessed. Really plunky? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow, seven. And I've just started growing this beard, so you know I'm an elder. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's great, you know, in the midst of this global pandemic, 
And when it comes to, it's a lung thing, you know, coronavirus gets in your lungs, but you're constantly cleaning out your lungs every day. And you're, you're doing lung exercises, if you will, and getting the oxygen to every part of your body. Absolutely. That is so well said. That's exactly right. And uh, health in general, um, nutrition is important. Staying yeah. physically fit. Um, my doctor says I'm, I'm doing great. And I, I don't do these things. I haven't had this regimen um, specifically to be healthy. It was yeah. all of necessity. But right. once you do something 20, 30, 40 years, it becomes ingrained. And maybe you do not. Maybe you do get the benefits from it long term. Wow. So I encourage everybody to, to do that. <laughs> I thank you so much. I love this RDA community makers, visual art, meeting, musical art. Mahari uh, Chabwera, thank you so much for all that you're doing to give back through the community or to the community through your vision of art. And, and Plunky, the saxophone man <laughs> with the long wind and, and great lungs and just giving back to the community uh, never can stop. We could thank never, so ever cancel Plunk. Never, ever, 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 and forever indebted to you for what you have given back to the community every single time. We couldn't have a community concert without Plunky in the community. So for this, we, we are so grateful, and thank you so much for being on here. I love. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you, Club. community clone and it just don't stop joining me is ned harvin a self-taught painter illustrator and art instructor that mostly works with youth from marginalized backgrounds and communities as a young black person art has always been a tool to explore nad's creativity perceptions of reality and a way of expressing themselves in a medium and manner that other people value and understand what's up next what's up hey how are you <laughs> i can't wait to talk about your visual art of this rva community maker z bay the poet come on up in here what up? On? <laughs> <laughs> and spoken word hip-hop artist based in richmond along with music basketball and uplifting people to be the best version of themselves cheap pursues her passion as an educator, mentor, and community advocate. Z Bay is the founder and CEO of Community 5050. And I got to throw in, she she deal with your, your head space. She's a clinician too. How y'all doing? Hey, what's going on? Wow, I'm here with the RBA community maker and the visual <laughs> artist. So yeah. what inspired you, Nat, to do this piece on Z Bay? Um, so... In the, our initial meeting, we kind of got a choice of like which uh, genre we wanted. So I was like, hip hop, hip hop. I definitely mm -hmm. want hip hop. So then I met with Zenobia and uh, we talked a couple of times and I just kind of was able to get an energy and I like to kind of portray the whatever the subject's energy in the piece. And so um, I asked what some of her inspirations were and we kind of talked about Nas a little bit. So with this piece, I kind of wanted to pay homage to like, <laughs> his album covers, but also because we a lot of our conversations were talking about how Zenobia is like, I have to step into this spotlight as, you know, for, because I have to, it's important to step into your own, but also the community right. shines through all the time. So to have Richmond from the South side shining through regardless mm -hmm. is kind of my inspiration for this piece. Wow, now I just want to know how in the world did you get Z-Bay to talk about herself a little bit? I thought that, <laughs> that kind thing of ain't gonna talk about. It's called. You know, just, just to just chop it up, you know. We okay. all kind of on the same wavelength that kind of kept coming back in our conversations. A lot of okay, so did she do a few pieces for you, real quick? Did she do pray and coping on? Oh, I went anyway. So, I got another question. So, this inspiration, but what inspired you to do visual art now? Um, I've just been drawn pretty much forever and then just not stopping, gradually picking up different mediums and techniques along the way. Mm -hmm. Got to a point where I was like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to do this all the time. Um, and just any weird black person that was just super black, but super weird at the same time. Like mm -hmm. I grew up 
in Newport News. So Missy being from the seventh five, it was like, she's really weird, but she's also really black, like outcast, um, Toni wow. Morrison. They're just very authentically black, but mm -hmm. no problem being weird. I'm weird. I'm gonna wear this trash bag, you know? I'm gonna wow. Have... I like that. Authentically black and weird. Very weird. Yeah. What, is, what is that weird piece? Cause I think I step into the weird piece too. I don't, I just, you know, growing up is just always like, it's really cool what you're doing, but I don't get you. You're kind of weird, like from everybody, from my family. Okay. It's just, you're weird. And, and a lot of times as black people, we have this kind of thing where we're like, maybe I should try to streamline it and be more black, but you could be weird right. and black. You could be so many things in black at the same time. Yeah. So just- You can be any shade of black if you want to. Black is so, so, so diasporic. Wow, it's so dope. <laughs> Super black and weird. Yes. That's easy. I right, see. <laughs> what's going what on bro? What is, what is your inspiration you started doing this community stuff now you this rva community maker i know you don't like to talk about you but take us all the <laughs> way back to that childhood and on that basketball court and yeah those so, too. well before i get into that question i want to first take a moment and pay homage to um a legend in the city of hip-hop artist Do joe doja he lost his life yeah. and uh, i want to you know just just put out there to his friends and family i didn't know the brother personally but I definitely was a listener to his music and, you know, yeah. just him being from Richmond. And so, you know, he, he's a legend in Richmond. So definitely salute to his family and, and pay my kudos. I want to start by saying that. Um, yeah. And so to answer the question, you know, hip hop, you know, like growing up in Southside Richmond, um, I didn't really listen to a lot of local artists in hip hop, but I was just to the outcasts. I was just to the Nas. Um, my family um, was always singing and performing and, I was a, a member, I am a member of the more scientific of America. I was born and raised in Islam. And so the, the format of when you go to like, most people go to church, you know, you sit in the, in, in the congregation, you listen. Well, in the temple, you, you, you got an opportunity to give up and give honor. So as a child, and like when I could start talking at four, I was able to speak in front of audiences and, yeah. and say what I, you know, I felt. And so that confidence of speaking always came from a child. And then um, a lot of people don't know, I have an undergrad in communications. So before I got into mental health, you know, I would I went to school for communication, understanding how mass mediums and if you want something out, how to communicate. You have to find innovative ways. And then um, I always wrote like when I was balling. A lot of people didn't know I was I was in my room writing and, and writing songs. But I always felt my confidence wasn't there like it was on the court. I didn't mm -hmm. feel like my peers would relate to the things I was saying if I was to get on the mic at 14. And so a lot of people didn't know that. So I just kept it in and kept it to myself. But um, I just always wrote, listened to hip hop artists, you know, listened to the as the genre was changing. And then also jazz music, old oldies but goodies. Like my mom is that that Sam Cook, that Otis Redding and, and Roy C. Like I grew up on all that, you know. Not so Roy C. oh my goodness. <laughs> That's, that's, that new joint. That's, that new, that's, that's that juju joint music and you know that soul you know like that soul like that james yeah. brown all that so just my inspiration comes from feeling you know just if that music feel good and that that word feel good and it resonate that's the art right there that's the mm -hmm. art most definitely it's the art and you know i want you to share it as this rba community maker because you're definitely doing it with community 50 50. but talk to us about that piece we were on the campus of virginia state university and you were this baller you know you were the baller and so that balling went to your head and you had a little attitude problem and what happened and i uh actually lost i actually lost my scholarship at virginia state university but that didn't lose my relationships with the coaches, the people. And so I carried that. And when I went to, I went to Cheney. And so that's where that VA to PA come from. See, a lot of people don't know that I, I brand VA to PA. Right. I have family, I have family in Pittsburgh. I have family in, in, um, in Philly. And so understand as an independent artist, we have to find our own engines and be very innovative about how we get in various markets. And so mm -hmm. just tapping back into that PA market from, from family to, to childhood and, and giving my information, I mean, giving my, uh, my art, a chance on that platform, I just yeah. gain momentum. And so, you know, just, just being in college at, at Cheney University, which is the first HBCU, may I put out there, I, I was fortunate to get that culture. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, Virginia Union, I appreciate you. <laughs> no, don't try. No, no, no. We got to go back and do some more research out. 
she, we came from out of a jail. A jail was there first, so. Well, yeah, let, let's do that research. That's some off the line stuff. I ain't never know that. Let's start, yeah. let's do that. Okay, all right, but that's, what. Well, man, let's get up, back over to you. When, you. when she said HBCU and the number one, you were looking like. I, I was just looking at you. I'm just listening. I'm just listening. <laughs> you didn't listen to the exchange. With, with that so, so now, what, if anything, you were hoping to portray with your work, Nat? Um, with my work in general? Yeah, in general, and also with this piece on Z-Bay. Um, yeah, in general, just to, like I said, I didn't have too many of those models um, as a youth, not too many. There was the weird black people, but you know, they, they get to a certain level. I just want us to know, us to know that it's possible. You can be, you can do all these things. You could be as weird as possible. You don't have to compromise who you are and still make it. Like mm -hmm. I've tried to to go do it different things, but it, you just always come back to, to the core. So that's what yeah. I always try to do in my work, whether it be like in the studio or in the community, just giving back to young people, teaching, yeah you can you can do this it's not about the technique it's about the desire to this is what i want to do and then yeah with um this piece like i said uh some of the imagery was inspired by um other albums other southern albums but really the conversation we had about the community shining through and all that zenobia does and then the portraitures kind of tell a story as they go across how zenobia was saying that in the beginning there wasn't too much confidence in herself in her yeah. message and then kind of went through this this transformation and now we're at the awakening. It's kind of sprightful. Uh oh, so you did your research oh, I did, on you know, I take this serious. This is, this is what I do. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, we, we look, look, but yeah, we, we met up. Like we took oh, this we seriously, you know what I mean? Like the awakening. Like, awakening. Yeah, we, we, yeah. I see you. Some community <laughs> things happening, we're doing, this things happening. It was a good, it was a good connection to be made. It needed to happen. Wow, wow. And just spending time with her at the youth center and, and just seeing how her communication is and all of the programs that she does bring to the youth. I think it's powerful mm -hmm. and giving them beats and rhymes and, and so much more. So in the midst of this, Ned, when you're talking about painting that picture from Z not having confidence to the awakening when it is confidence, do you think that we should not not really push? but open it up and awaken our youth to it's okay to yes. be quote unquote weird or nerd. Yeah, yeah, it's okay to be weird, it's okay to be different, it's okay to to not have all the answers at the beginning, like I'm all about the process and that's kind of what we talked about the first time we talked, is this yeah. evolution, um, it's okay, you're not gonna have it, it's not gonna be cute as, at first, but you gotta kind of keep it up and mm -hmm. I think that gets lost. Um, a lot of, I when I teach, I have a lot of students that be like, oh, it's not that good, so don't judge me too hard. And it's not it's not about being good, you know, it's about I'm doing this thing, like I said, and eventually the more I do it, like like I said, I've been drawn my whole life. In the beginning, I was drawn just like all the other kids and it's okay to, right. to, to give into that process. But oftentimes we gotta get to it fast, get this money, cause I don't, I've never had that part and just awakening in people, in the youth that, it's okay mm -hmm. to, to take your time and to not have all the answers and to struggle, but keep going. Thank you, Ned. And back to you, Z, babe, when we're talking about the awakening, because we're taking people on this journey when they're looking at the piece. So talk to everybody about what the awakening means to you. Um, awakening of yourself, you know, awakening of the things around us. You know, we just came through 2020, you know, and no. if that was an awakening in itself, that that that's on a global scale. But for me, um, back in 2013, I lost my sister and she was um, a very, very, you know, she was a big sister. She was a mentor. A lot of what people see here in the community, she lived in Pittsburgh and what a lot of people see in the community. They probably wouldn't have seen if she didn't pour a lot of things into me. And I mean, like just the, the structure of, of, of organization. And so going through that heartbreak, going through that pain, you know, not knowing how to deal with it. And then it also triggered trauma that I didn't know I had from childhood and wow. so then I lost my dad three three years later in the middle of that you know a great you know big sis Lorna Pinckney she she passed so it was like all yeah. this stuff was happening um my young brother uh Eric McCorkle um Oliver Luck so loss transition made me to appreciate life more made me appreciate the look the little things to realize things are not as big as it was 
um, realize my own issues. You know, I, a lot of people don't know, but I'm diagnosed with general anxiety, you know, and, and I don't talk about that a lot, but that's that's real. You know, while I'm out here assessing and diagnosing everybody else, I'm running around here with a five four, four one point one. That's a general anxiety diagnosis. Right. But I had to awaken myself and accept that to get past that and to deal with it and, and use those coping skills that, you know, I have to, um, you know, to, to just live. And so if I can do that with myself, I have to be vulnerable and, and open up and give that to other people. So whether that's in the community, whether that's in, um, in music, poetry, and that's why I do it, you know? And so like when Nad was saying earlier, you know, when, when we met, I, I disclosed with her, I realized throughout this whole 2020, I'm really an introvert. I didn't know. I'm just good at being in front of people. Right. I'm, I'm skilled at it. But the real me, I really like being behind the scenes because that's why I felt comfortable. But I had to realize God, Allah, put something in me to be in front of a camera. So I got to do this work right now mm-hmm. and, 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 and go from there. So that, that's my awakening. And I'm always on it. We always on it. Every day is the evolution. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, you know, your, your latest video that's out, your music video, and it's called Pray For Me. Just straight up and everybody can feel that it, it was no nonsense it was talking about the issues and challenges that we could have in the midst of 2020 and beyond the mask on or the mask off just pray for me yep and i thought that was deep to do as yep. well now you have deep community commitment because you talked about some of the challenges and you talked about your inspiration for being where you are today and what you're doing and how you can be behind the scenes. But let's talk about your deep community commitment to our youth. Oh man, I was one of those youth. I'm a product of Richmond, Virginia, um, product of RPS. Um, I, a lot of people may not know the story, but I, I got comfortable with my awakening to telling my story. At 14, I made a decision to, uh, um, you know, use some use a technique that I thought was the best for me at that time, dealing with my trauma, and I, I made a decision and fought. And those consequences was I was expelled from all Richmond public schools. And for me, you know, I lost basketball. I was on the eighth grade team at, at Elkhart playing for Huguenot. So, you know, just a lot of things I had lost. Um, and then just understanding, I got to give that back to the youth now. Because yeah. not to take away from the decision I made, but I realized if I would have, we would have probably had some other support, some mentors, some, some, some interventions beforehand maybe we probably wouldn't have made that decision. And so I want to give that to the youth. I want to give them that support. Um, I, I grew up in a household with, with two parents, but even though I had two parents, there were still some things that were maybe missing that coaches, mentors, other people in the community picked up on and, and I didn't fall between those cracks. So I just want to give that back, you know, to our youth. And we see the, the, the city, the state or whatever, not just in Richmond, but all over. You know, they taking down basketball courts. They they taking away programs. They defunding all these programs, and then they wonder why these youth are acting and responding the way they're responding. And so, um, you know, I just want to. I just I, I feel like that's that's part of my purpose. God had me go through that at fourteen to do this now at at forty forty two. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, think about it. You're over forty, so you got to start thinking about those. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nan Harmon, I appreciate your beautiful art during this RBA Community Makers uh, 2021. So, how do my listeners get in touch with you online and social? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Naz the Nomad um, or on Patreon.com at uh, Patreon.com backslash Tomato Wow. All right, Z, how do we get in touch with you online and social? Oh, well, you can go to the website www. Uh, zbay the poet.com and now uh, you can go to www.community5050.org so both of those sites will lead you to you know my music community and things like that and i'm actually going to re-release the awakening um oh, really? in february re-release because i felt like it went over my head i mean the awakening it, it was so it was so in the moment and when i went back and listened to it then on the business side you know had to do some things to, you know release that so we're going to re-release the awakening in february right. 2021 that's good. That's good stuff. One love. God bless you. Peace. Peace. Could you please pray? Could you please pray for me? Joining me, I have a pair of artists, visual artist Justice Dwight and jazz blues musician Desiree Roos. Now, let me talk a little bit about Justice. He's a self-taught visual artist originally from Plainfield, New Jersey, who now resides in Richmond, Virginia. Justice focuses on 
portraiture in his works because he always felt like there was a lack of black people. Yeah, in this arena, it became a part of Justice's artistic mission to showcase not only black beauty, but to showcase queer identity in his works. Justice, welcome. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. So I always wanted to do it, but I know I can't do it, but uh, I let her do it. Hey, Desiree. Hey. <laughs> Desiree has been one of this region's favorite performers for decades. She is revered for her powerful yet controlled lush voice with this three and a half octave range. Her ability to sing nearly every genre, including jazz, gospel, blues, classical, and opera. And she's traveled the world internationally, playing with basically every jazz artist from Boney James to R&B soul artist, Brian McKnight, Joel Albright, and B.B. King. What's up, Desiree? How are you? I'm doing great, my fellow Unionite. So, yes, let's start. Yes, you, you in the building. When did you start your current art justice? Oh, wow. Um, I feel like I've always been doing art throughout my life ever since I was very young because my father was a painter. And so I really picked it up from him. Um, but professionally, I think I started doing acrylic paintings maybe six years ago. Just six years ago? Mm -hmm. Wow. You're doing some great stuff. And what, and you just, you mentioned it, but I want you to go a little deeper about it. What and who inspired you to do visual art? Oh, definitely it initially started with my dad because he's colorblind. And mm -hmm. so I remember being like wow. five years old and being up helping him mix his colors and just seeing someone create something like so beautiful to me, it really spoke to me. And so it's something I always wanted to pursue. And he ended up, you know, putting me under his wing and teaching me so many things. And I wanna say five years ago, around when I first started doing art professionally, mm -hmm. my father unfortunately had a stroke mm -hmm. and he lost his memory. And after that, I had the pleasure of actually teaching him everything he taught me. And we kind of came full circle with that. Wow, this is wonderful. And your dad was colorblind, blending all of the wonderful colors. Yes, all of them. Wow, that is great. So that's why I wanted us to go deep because you sometimes when we talk about inspiration, we'll give a one-liner. Oh, I was inspired by my dad, but yeah. to we didn't want to miss that part. And that was a great part, Justin. Now, what, if anything, were you hoping to portray with your work? Uh, I want to portray Black people in my art. I want to portray Black people in all forms. And I want to showcase what that love is. I want someone to walk into a space with my art hanging and see themselves, see a part of themselves or a part of someone they know. Wow, this is good stuff. And I thank you so much. Tell us about your commitment to giving back to the RVA community and why? Oh, well, my commitment to giving back is really important to me. For a while, I was able to teach the youth in Richmond and I feel like the youth is really the future. And I felt kind of like honored to be able to help pass on things that I know to them mm -hmm. and so that they can use it to express themselves in a nice artistic way. So how is it going with our youth of today when you have hip hop and R&B or just being 15 minutes of fame on your uh, your screenshots and your FaceTime? How does that work? How, we, how do we tie that in to get them to express themselves with the visual art? Well, now it's like pop culture is so inspiring. Everyone wants to like go viral, especially the youth. So right. they're sitting around, they're like, yeah. how can I go viral? They see a popular meme or celebrity they love and they'll do it in an artistic way and try to tag them and hashtag to get their attention. And so it's really a tool to keep them interested. All right, that's good stuff. Well, Justice, thank you so much for being here and I love your art. Wow. Yeah. So let's get over to Desiree. So I'm talking to Desiree because we both had uh, kids at the same school at one time. And uh, you know what else is interesting with you and your artistic ability? You know, my favorite artist, uh, which is Desiree, but <laughs> you started, you you know, to collectively. And this is something personal because I know you. We started families late. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, my, my daughter was actually my, my, I, I say she was my 40th birthday gift to myself. Cause I always wanted yeah. a little girl. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. 
And yeah, so my daughter, yeah, my daughter was my 41st birthday to me. But I just wanted to get that out because we're, we're talking about the visual art and we're talking about the inspiration behind so many things and what we're doing. And so I want to talk to you, you know, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on this current art form? You know, it's everything is always evolving and it's so mm -hmm. innovative and it's it's really amazing to watch as we say, the up and coming artist. Yeah. Um, but in the same vein, it's nice to see what goes around comes around because there's really nothing new under the sun. And so when I witness an artist that is intertwining um, music from the past with today's music, that of course fills me with pride because it lets me know that I'm still doing, I'm still in the game. <laughs> um, and, you know, we're doing a good thing. So we're yeah. inspiring them to continue to be innovative, to continue to be educators in the art form and to just let it grow. Desiree, who or what inspired you and who still or what inspires you today? You know, um, I love what Justice said about his his parents or his dad, because my parents inspired me. My dad was, of course, a performer, um, and he and my mom met while they were performing together. So mm -hmm. I grew up in a house full of music, um, and I used to always say my, my biggest um, crush was on my dad, especially when he was in the house, you know, just on the piano playing, um, which was an average thing for us. That was the norm. Most kids wanted to go out and play with the kids on the block with Pam and them. Um, I I just wanted to sit on the piano stool with my dad and goof off at the piano and sing and play music. So he was my biggest inspiration, both he and my mom, um, you know, hearing about their travels and things from the 50s and 60s, um, mm -hmm. especially back when Blacks couldn't enter a lot of buildings, but yet they were allowed to go in the back door to perform on the stage. So that had a huge impact on um, just our lives growing up and in general. And then um, just hearing him sing, hearing them both sing. So he, he truly inspired me. And today my kids inspire me because they're all musically inclined. And um, even though, you know, I'm not a big star, um, it's like, oh, mommy, whatever. But yet yeah, when I, mommy. when I, when they get to see me on the big stage, it's, you know, to see their smiling faces, it's, it makes me proud. So, so it's with, all in the family. So with your kids being musically inclined, any singing or instruments? Instruments. Yes. My daughter plays piano and she's the dancer. Uh, my oldest son is a drummer and he's a DJ. And then my youngest son plays guitar, drums, bass, violin, and he's trying to dab in a uh, saxophone. An instrumentalist. Definitely. None of them want to sing, though. I think really? it's, I think they think that, OK, that's mommy's lane. So we're going to stay out of her lane. We're going to do something totally different. And well, I definitely okay. can't play guitar or saxophone. <laughs> well, I think for sure you always have a band. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that and that is worth it. I I think when we have our children and we don't try to push them into our careers, I I don't really think that was something you you did. And for me, being a radio announcer, DJing in the clubs, and and you name it, and hosting other events. I never thought that would be of something of interest to my daughter. And she's a drummer. And wow, you know, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. now she wants to go into the broadcast arena. And it's so amazing. Wow. Yeah, my yeah. Um, Eliana is in the specialty center at Verina for yeah, me. That's where Kenya, yeah, Kenya's yeah. kind of old. Exactly. So that's what she wants to do. And, and you know, my youngest son, he I featured him on my CD and he was 10 years old. He actually turned 11 the day after we recorded. So the engineer said, dude, you can tell people you did your first CD when you were 10. So wow. <laughs> it, is, it is so amazing. Our it kids, is. you know, they soak up like sponges. Either they will do the right thing, follow your path or they don't but it's, it's all designed for us to support them in whatever they want to do. And I think music and the arts, it's so deeply rooted in our genes. It truly you know? is. I, I think anything artistic, you can't go wrong because 
I, I truly believe that art makes the world go round. Wow, that is good stuff. Hey, Justice, you want to add to that? Because we're we're sharing this family thing and you did the same thing and teaching this art form back to your dad. Yes, I want to say like that was beautifully said. It's so wonderful to hear about like who has inspired you and yeah. it's been, like the connection between the two. And I also think it's super cool that your kids are also picking up on their, mm -hmm. you know, it's in their DNA, the music, the beauty of that sound that's in them. So it's, they get to like do it as well. And that is the same for you and, and your visual art. It's in your DNA and in yeah. your DNA from your dad to pursue that and to make it pop culture now. That is good stuff. Absolutely. Justice, what inspired you to do a piece of Desiree Roots, the RVA community maker? Oh my gosh. I mean, it's, it's a lot of reasons. It's hard to kind of narrow them down. I mean, besides the beauty that she is, Desiree Root, Aww. the beautiful, lovely sounds that comes out of her voice. Like she, her voice is an instrument. And on top of that, I look, you know, I did some more digging into her music and there is this album, Don't Ever Stop Dreaming. And that's something that's been my motto for 2020. Like Aww. the pandemic hit really tough and it was hard to like, you know, keep creating, keep fighting. And when I heard the album, I was like, wow, this really like, you know, signifies what I've been going through and what my motto is to get up day to day and keep it pushing. Wow. wow. That is great. I know it's gonna make me cry. But your voice is beautiful. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Oh. Uh, you deserve all the flowers. Thank you. That's a wonderful thing. And I thank you so much, Desiree Boots and Justice. Dwight for being here. This is great. The visual art. Wow. And we got some musical art. I just, I just love it. Don't you love it? <laughs> I love it. Love it. Desiree, before you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, yeah. I can't hit that one. But, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I like it anyway. <laughs> thank you, well, I think for all that you do. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, I love the art and I, ju I just love it. I love it. It makes the world Visuals. go round. Makes the world go round. Mm -hmm. You're going to have me singing and I can't sing. I call <laughs> I'm a shower singer too. <laughs> so, all right, Justice. Yes. Before we go, where can we find your works online? Oh, you can find my art online um, at Etsy.com. That's E-T-S-Y dot com backslash Justice, J-U-S-T-I-C-E, Dwight, D-W-I-G-H-C. All right. And Desiree, where can we find you online and socially? I am on Facebook, Desiree Roots. I'm on Instagram at I am Diva Roots. I am on Twitter. My daughter just put me on TikTok, Lord Jesus. Yay! Uh, <laughs> TikTok too. And, and you can find me at www.desireeroots.com. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, it's me, Miss Community Cloud. Now I want to get to the next RVA community makers, David Marion Green. Step on in. How you doing? Glad to be I'm here. Good. Well, David was born in South Carolina and now resides in RVA. At an early age, he found his artistic gift and developed a passion for creating. As a graduate of the real HU, Hampton University <laughs> with right, you, thought that. <laughs> you know HU with a bachelor's degree in architecture he always found time to continue following his passion and practicing his craft through his art he depicts positive themes of black life family and struggle of being black in America art has become a platform to voice his views of the world and also tell his story David thank you for joining us tonight Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. It's going to be crazy, too. Dr. John Bibbs, what's up? What's up, Chloe? <laughs> How you doing? I'm great. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Tell your mama I say hey. I will. I'll tell you <laughs> say what's up. 
Dr. Bibbs is a native of Richmond, and he has been a part of the music community in our city for over 30 years. John began his musical journey at two years old, studying piano with a VCU grad student. By the time he was 12, John was sought, he was a sought after performer throughout the city and had played featured presentations with everyone from the iconic gospel group, the Winans, to the Richmond Philharmonic Orchestra. Hey, Dr. John Bibbs. Hey, what's up, David? It's good to see you too, bro. How you doing, man? <laughs> Ain't you connect? Ain't you in the building? We are here. You know that, right? right? We got visual artists meeting musical artists. So we're going to jump right in. When did you start your form of art, David? Um, well, I've always been an artist ever since I was a kid. But um, wow. it, yeah, it's funny. Like the first, growing up in South Carolina, it was hard for me to kind of like find that identity or kind of place yeah. myself in art. But um, sadly enough, my first exposure to black art was through good times. My parents put me on and I was one of those kids that thought that JJ was painting all these beautiful, <laughs> beautiful Real? artists. Real? Yeah, yeah. But um, I grew, um, I went to Hampton University, studied architecture, but I always had the passion for art. So I just continued after that, started getting through and galleries and museums and get a little bit more exposure and it brought me to where I am now. That is so great that you're talking about good times because watching television and black families on TV, it was educational for right. us. It was. And it I'm was. just looking at your artistry behind you. When I'm looking at I, when I'm looking at that picture of a black boys, two black boys with books on their heads, it tells me that blacks to the future, let's go. And education is definitely key and we can see it. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That's great, ain't it? There you go. Watch it. it, is, it is. Day. Let me find <laughs> out. What a who. And I know we talked about you watching good times, but what was another inspiration for you outside of good times and JJ? Outside of that, I had great mentors by the my, my art teachers in high school, Alvin and Brett Staley. So they kind of groomed me, showed me how to work oil painting. And so they kind of, they brought me into a, a different um, element where I was able to have confidence in my art. So they were my first inspirational forces that were people. But other than that, just everyday life inspires me. I'm inspired by what I see. I'm inspired by the experiences, the Black yeah. struggle, the Black accomplishments, everything that that life has to offer ends up being an inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. And it makes a beautiful visual, definitely. And now, Dr. John, what's up? So your current art form of music, what is your inspiration? And what continues to inspire you today, right now? You know, David and I share this, uh, besides the Hampton connection, we share this connection between uh, family uh, and and. Um, inspiration for children. So I've always tried to create music that is family friendly and that promotes the concept of genuine, deep emotion and love and connection between people. So I sing old school love songs, Chloe. I don't really do the do it to me love songs. You know, I do the, yeah. the I, I, I do the, the heartfelt music. That's that's yeah. what I try to what I try to write. Feels so good when somebody loves you back by TP. I feel come on. You. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on. Well, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, stay on track. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm. I, I've always been a guy who who I, I am a hopeless romantic. That's just how I am as a person. Yeah. I've always written songs about a hopefulness for love, a longing for relationship, and hope with with the hope of inspiring people to love each other and and really lean into building genuine relationships and families. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a relationship here between John and David. So what inspired you to do this piece, John, on David, on John? When I found out that John was going to be a recipient and I was going to be paying them, like I was just floored, I, I was floored with excitement because we have a connection, not only um, the, the HU connection as we spoke of, but yeah. my child, I have a nine-year-old, just turned 10 over the weekend, actually, that as a product of Richmond Prep Christian Academy, yeah. which is the school, John's school. Yeah. So um, I, that's how I got to know John through his school and his academics and his philanthropy and giving back there. So it was um, it was a welcome surprise. But in addition to that, he's also been a huge supporter of my art. He's a collector of my art. 
we have conversations not on the regular but we we, we know each other well so i was just amazed to be able to capture him and, and just kind of bring the, the work that he does in the community and his musical work to the forefront. Wow. And speaking of community, John, let's talk about, and for all of us who do know your commitment, but to our new viewers tonight, let's talk about your commitment to the community and why do you stay in the community? Um, you know, one of the things that's so important and, it, you know, just the imagery behind David is so uh, instructive here. Um, education is so important and giving our kids the best possible start that we can right, is crucial. I remember when I was a little kid, um, my mom's mantra was, I'm going to expose you to the best of everything that I possibly can. You yeah. may not like it, you may not go forward with it, but I'm going to show it to you. Mm -hmm. You're going to see it because you never know what you may like, what you may like, what uh, inspire you later on. So seeing boys and girls uh, learn and grow is a great passion of mine. Um, and it's really interesting because I didn't really, from the beginning of my musical journey, I kind of resisted um, getting into the educational field because if I'm being honest about it, I kind of saw it as a failure of my creative uh, endeavors. But as I matured a little bit, I started to see how these two things could work together. Um, one of the moments that, that kind of was an aha moment for me was in 2013, I did a collaboration with uh, No Malice, formerly Malice of the Clips. Um, Oh. And and the song that he released was Bury That, and it was in the MTV um, Top 10 Countdown that week. Yeah. And I came to school, and the kids had seen me in this music video, and their minds were just blown. Mm -hmm. And But it, it opened the door so that I was able to relate to them in a different way. Mm -hmm. They saw me in a different light, and that was an aha moment for me. And these don't have to be separate worlds. These things can be connected. And um, I can bring my creative side and my uh, community and educational side together. So yeah, that's a little bit of my story about how the community and my art interface. Wow. And just, talk, just you talking, I'm sorry, just you talking. No, go ahead, David. Yeah, just you saying that just brought together another connection point between the two of us. It's the reason that I create positive imagery of black children and make sure that I depict them in my black art because I want them to be able to identify with what they're seeing. I want them to be able to see themselves in a different light to know that I can achieve whatever it is I want to achieve. Because I never had that growing up. It was hard for me to find those positive images outside of good times. So that's why I'm intentional in creating that art. So just like John, he, you know, brings that 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 back together, and he's able to identify the children. That's the same same connection point that we have, also. Mm -hmm. And it's and we're connected musically and visually by the education, and education of key. But when we're talking about education, we have to meet our students and our kids and our community of kids where they are. And they have to see the visual of it. If we're not showing them education in another form, because education is not just the book book, but Start education is a piece of music and how you communicate, yeah. how you flow it and how you write it or how you paint it. So mm -hmm. I think this is great. I'm, oh my goodness, congratulations. <laughs> RBA community makers, David Marion and Dr. John Bibbs in the building, babies. Thank you. That's right, thank you. Another one, the RVA Community Makers. Come on in, Austin Oz. Miles, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm good, let me talk a little bit about you. Austin is a practicing painter, designer, and public artist located in RVA. 
She uses her color, texture, and distortion to embody her own stories and contribute to the conversation about Black female experiences. In addition, Miles collaborated with the Jamestown Settlement in 2019, creating two works featuring the tenacious triculture women of Jamestown and the first Black woman to be documented in the United States of America in 1619. Angelo, how you doing? I say. I'm doing good. How you doing? I love those pictures. We're going to get to your visual art shortly. Come on <laughs> in, Cora Harvey Armstrong. <laughs> Good morning, Chloe. Ah, Jesus. Grace Hello, to Chloe. <laughs> Hands up. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Cora is from Newtown District of King and Queen yeah. County, Virginia. Cora has been playing the piano for more than 60 years. Yeah. She and her sisters, Clara Johnson and Virginia Young, have portrayed themselves at the Swift Creek Mill Theater in a play written about their lives as they sang gospel music with their mother, yeah. yes. the late Eva Harvey, entitled yeah. Those Harvey Girls. Cora yeah. and her sister and nieces now sing together as a Harvey family mm -hmm. and have been blessed to perform at many folk festivals and shows across the country. Cora Thank has you. served as a member of the King and Queen County School Board and has served as treasurer treasurer of the King and Queen Volunteer Rescue Squad for more than 15 years. Miss Tickle the Ivories, Cora. Yeah. Hart. <laughs> God has been really good to me, Clovey. You know really what? So good. I love the RVA community makers and the oh. chosen visual artists and the musical artists. It's just like we're hanging out from way back in the day when y'all in the <laughs> churches, you roll up, everybody just starts surrendering, just like that. But anyway, all right, so let's get started. All right, uh, so Austin, we're gonna start with you. What? When did you start your current art form? Mm, I would say that was more so fall 2017. Wow. Um, because I always said like I would. That was the the semester I graduated. I graduated December 2017 from um, VCU, and. Yeah, I wasn't sure I was going to do this paint thing. Like, I, I wasn't quite sure until that semester. Really? So that semester, even though I was in art school, I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if I was going to pursue this full time. Mm -hmm. um, and so that semester, I just kind of fell in love with this. Well, I've always loved the female form and trying to mm -hmm. I mean, um, depict Black female stories. But yeah, it was then that it kind of came came to be and the way I um used the like the curly lines and the yeah. fell in love with texture and I just kind of went with it and been going with it ever since. So I see some of your art in the back. Yes. The of us as black women, we can see ourselves on the wall in paintings too. <laughs> Thank <laughs> and you we very should much. see ourselves, you know, like we wow. should there should be more of it, which is what mm -hmm. I strive to do. I try to tell be contribute to more of the narrative of what you know being a black woman is about and of course it's different from everybody and so that's why yeah. i would try to capture those stories and mm -hmm. and share them in my work mm -hmm. and you pretty much answered the question but that's to talk about that inspiration as well you graduate from college and you was like oh i might pursue it full time but then you start looking at the black female mm -hmm. which is the most underrepresented and disrespected human being absolutely <laughs> but we got power baby <laughs> yes, absolutely. We're the double minority, right? And we we get it both ways. And yeah. oftentimes, um, we, we're going through so much on the internal, we're not able to really process it. We don't have time for that, right? We have to be strong for our families. And so my work is about this internal conversation that's happening. How does the Black woman feel about herself? How does the Black woman get to know of herself? And cope with all the things that she's experiencing, right? And so what I end up painting are these, these inner conversations and then they become these like outer body experiences for people to kind of see what's going on with this woman and how she's growing and how she's learning and how she's being tenacious and whatnot. And that's what I hope to be able to capture with Cora's piece. Wow, <laughs> and, and speaking of Cora, what inspired you with the gospel music uh, genre and Cora yeah. Armstrong? You know, Clovia is so amazing. Um, I grew up in a Christian home and my at five years old, my mom and dad enrolled me in a music class down in Tappahannock with a lady who just recently passed away, Elsie Holmes Rayner. Um, and she was my inspiration. She and my mama, they 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 pushed me. Um, I used to hate music. 
hate it <clears throat> to the point of um, wow. when I would watch a TV show and you know how the credits roll up on the TV show? Yeah. Anything that had to do with music, I would make pretend I was shooting it. Cause I would, I was, I, did, I hated it, hated it. Didn't want to practice, didn't want to play piano, didn't want to do anything like that. I wanted to be somebody else, and uh, God just would not let me get away. And I'm so grateful and so thankful now at 65 years old, I just turned 65 years old, um, that, that God has kept me and has used me. And I'm so honored for this whole experience. You know, um, it, it, sometimes people think that once you cross a certain age line, your usefulness becomes a little bit less and less and less. But I'm a witness that when you let the Lord use you and let him guide your footsteps, guide your life, no matter matter how old you are, just like Abraham proved to us, you can be 95, 100 years old and still be able to receive the dream that's wow. in you. I still haven't received the dream that God has promised me, wow. but I have had all kinds of experiences that I'm just so grateful for. So gospel music has always been in my life. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to be the next Aretha, Fra Aretha Franklin. But um, that didn't turn out to be <laughs> what God intended for me. But yeah. now, because of ministry, because of the way he uses my singing, the way people say that they feel when they hear me sing or yes. you know, I minister to people, you know, yeah. I'm just I'm just so grateful for everything mm -hmm. that he knew from the beginning that I had no clue that he would do. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for it all. Yep. He <laughs> made your music ministry. Definitely. Yeah, and it's so interesting. Yeah. And that's why I love being a part of the RVA community makers, because yeah. who would assume that you hated everything about music? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, because I wanted to be somebody else. I'm, I'm from a little small area um, in the country. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be flashy. I wanted to be, yeah. you know, out there. I wanted to, I saw other girls doing things that I wanted to do, but because my mom and daddy loved the Lord, they said, uh-uh, you're not doing none of this. This is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you what, when I got the, I, out of King and Queen and got to Virginia State for my first year, honey, I learned how to do everything that I didn't know how to do when I was in high school and then King and Queen. But that was a but good thing. HBC it was, a good, power. it was a good thing, but it was a bad thing at the same time because of the fact that I never did graduate from Virginia State University. Oh, okay. Never did get my music degree. And but I had the best time of my life because I directed the gospel choir and I traveled all over the place. I learned how to do all kinds of things. Yeah. And then after I left there, after eight years, I left there. And the Lord used me in other ways, brought me closer to him. I had to reach a low place in my life. I hit the bottom, drug use, promiscuous living. You mm. know, I had to go through all of that and to for him to let me live through all of that. And Girl, then to me like I'm up in church. Girl, I'm gonna tell you what, that's what we need to be because particularly now in this COVID season, he's trying to get us to see that there is purpose for all of it. The good, yeah. uh, Marvin Sepp says, the good, bad, the ugly, great and small is purpose for all of it. And we got to go through it because it makes us who we, who God intends for us to be. So, yeah, I had to go through all of that. And I'm thankful. And get this, Clovia. God has got such a great sense of humor. I didn't get a bachelor's degree from Virginia State, but he gives me a master's degree that I earned from the Virginia Union um, STVU. I am a graduate with a, a master's degree, and I really do want that. So that the, uh, the my bachelor's in music, and he's gonna work on that too. Oh my goodness! He, he handles it all the way he chooses, and I'm just so grateful. I'm just so grateful. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your story. This is all about love. These are these are real stories, and that's why it. The only way you can share mm -hmm. that story is based on your community commitment. Because yeah. whatever Quran song is performing in concert, whatever mm. was heavy on you, it's lifted. Well, you know Straight what? Now he, now he has blessed me. The, 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 in, in this season of COVID, the main thing that I do now is sing for funeral services. Wow. Different funeral homes in the Richmond area. Um, yeah. I go Maryland. I go, you know, wherever he sends me. But his, my, my responsibility is to sing and to tell people about him, which brings joy even in a season of sadness. Mm -hmm. That our, our family and our friends, you know, we're, we're not lost. 
We're not left by ourselves. God is with us and they are in a much better place. And that's one of the things that he has charged me in this season to give people hope, to let them know that, no, this is not the end. This is only the beginning. And you can have that same beginning if you walk according to what his will is for your life. Girl, I need you to say dun dun on that piano. No. <laughs> Real quick. Now, Austin, I can see why you chose Cora Armstrong. Now you tell everybody why. Let me tell you, every time I hear Miss Cora speak, I cry. I'm over here You're like crazy. I was <laughs> you know, trying to not hear that over here. And I mean, I am just so blessed to be able to. Oh, God. Tr even try to capture all that is Miss Cora. You know, like the first time we had a conversation. Oh, yeah. um, well, well, let me answer your question. I love gospel music. So um, I, I was just so I enthralled to be able to be able to do this um, for her and do it to paint her. But the first time we had a conversation, I think we talked for like an hour. I cried. <laughs> I, I mean, I cried because just Miss Cora is just the epitome of just like yeah. love and hope. Oh, she man. really is. You really are. And, and I'm just so thankful to be able to talk to you and hear your story and listen to your music. Um, I actually was not very familiar with her before I started um, started on this project. So I'm so thankful that she is coming to my life in this way and that I'm able to, again, try to be a part of her story. And is now she's a part of mine. Um, one of the things that we really have in common and that I came to realize um, before meeting Cora is that I am an instrument, you know, like all of my talents are not mine, they are God's, you know, I am used. And yeah. so I am thankful again to be able to be, you know, y'all got me to go the Look, I'm, <laughs> I'm so thankful to be able to be used in this way. Um, mm -hmm. And to have achieved what I've achieved and also to, to meet up with Miss Cora and to be able to do this, to mm -hmm. not only inspire others by her story and, and my work, but also for us to kind of be able to now lean on each other to continue mm -hmm. to do these things that we have planned. So. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for being here, Austin. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to pick up some of your work too. You know, I always support Black. I mean, <laughs> I, I do. Black Future 365. And Cor Armstrong, yes. how do our viewers tonight get in contact with you? Well, I'm on Facebook, so you can look for Cora Armstrong on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. I'm I'm kind of like uh, I've got to get into this Instagram thing. I'm not. There's it's a false coming. one. It's, there's a false one out there that has my name on it, but I might just take it over. I don't I don't know. We'll see how that works. But I mean, you know, they, they, you, you can find me. You can find me online. Um, I have an email, arm 21 cora at aol.com. And, uh, you know, when, when the Lord intends for people to find people, we find each other. And yeah. also, that's how come we're connected because his intention was that we find each other. And I'm grateful. Yeah. Well, that's how we're going to sum it up. Thank you yeah. so much, Austin Oz Miles, for being here with your visual artistry mm -hmm. and Cora Armstrong with your music mm -hmm. artistry. And thank you for sharing your story. God bless you, RVA community. Thank you, thank you Kobe, for thank all you. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Love you, girls. We honor all the cultural spirit and energy that went into creating RVA Community Makers 2021. What a wonderful example of the intersection of art, music, and the Black experience. Please visit VMFA to see RVA Community Makers installed. Tonight's virtual program and RVA Community Makers Mixed Media Artwork on view in the atrium is presented by Chase. Why did RVA Community Makers focus on music this year? You know, I asked and I got the answer, VMFA has a new exhibition coming in May titled The Dirty South. Yes, you heard right, The Dirty South, Modern Art, Material Culture, and the Sonic Impulse. The Dirty South exhibition is coming in May. Visit vmfa.museum for more info. Now let's ride.